is what one does, what does that mean? What's it all mean? Believe in your dreams, but what does, what does that mean? Hey guys, it's Call Me Adam, and we are here at stardreamscafe.com inside the beautiful Algonquin Hotel in the heart of New York City's theater district. And today we are dreaming with Lauren Elder. Now, I first came to know you when I saw you in Hair on Broadway. And since then, you've been in Sideshow on Broadway, and you've been performing all around the city and in Long Island City, your own original music. And now you're also getting ready to release your debut album, which I love the title of it, which goes so well with our show, <laughs> Dreamy Afternoons with Lauren Elder. I mean, what better title to have than that? Because I can't think of a better afternoon than to just like lie in a meadow listening to your music. Thank you. You're welcome. You're welcome. Um, so let's just start with like a little bit, what made you, what made now the right time for you to do a, a debut album? Because I am not working on any musicals right now, so I have like a break mm -hmm. where I have this open time so I can just completely devote it to my own music mm -hmm. because working on a musical takes all of your time and I have to put my music aside when that happens. So right now was the perfect time. There was this space and I have these great people that were all available to come together and make it happen and so seizing the moment and taking advantage of it. Now the way that you got this album funded I love is you, you did, I mean a lot of people are doing it this way these days is uh, crowdfunding mm -hmm. and the platform you chose was Rocket Hub yes. and you raised the money, you raised over $10,000 in like six days. Well, we didn't, we didn't get that much in six days, but we raised over $6,500 in six okay. days. Okay, okay. It was overwhelming. I was blown away by the support and the love, and it was an incredible feeling. Mm -hmm. I just couldn't believe it. I mean, it's sort of like everybody gets to make this album. Not only you, yeah. but everybody. It's really a collaborative effort. Yeah. You know, I've only been able to get to one of your concerts, <laughs> which is not enough. That's but, all right. <laughs> but the one concert I was at, it was so enjoyable. And, and it's, it's very um, folky and, and I feel like a little like bluegrass country-ish. Mm -hmm. Where do you draw your inspiration for your music? Um, from my feelings. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Most of my songs come from when I am emotionally overwhelmed mm -hmm. and I need to express it somehow. Mm -hmm. um, and I know I shouldn't just go on Facebook and just post it as a status, uh -huh. you know? So I write a song. Uh -huh. <laughs> and you, you use it, your choice of instrument is the ukulele. Yeah, um, I had a ukulele just sitting there mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because I had an audition for Boardwalk Empire years ago to play a naked ukulele player, oh. which I didn't get that part, oh. but that's all right. I got a, I got a better part. And you got a Boardwalk ukulele. Empire. And then I, I had a ukulele mm -hmm. and um, it sat there for like two years. Mm -hmm. And then one day I had this song that I just had to write and I said, it's time, let's figure this out. <laughs> and I just picked it up and I just kind of started playing different things until it sounded like what I wanted. And the rest is history. That's awesome. And another show you were on, in addition to Broadwalk Empire, you were on one of my other favorite shows, Law and Order. Yeah. And you have a ukulele. Yes. So if you were to commit a crime with your ukulele, what crime would you commit? I would probably like murder someone who wronged me. 
How would you murder them with a ukulele? I, will, I would bang them over the head uh -huh. and knock them out, uh -huh. and then I'd take the strings and then I would strangle them with the strings. Okay. Yeah. All right. That'll work, and then right? And you'd have to buy a new ukulele. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. All right. Because I got to burn that one. Yeah. Got to get rid of the evidence. No, you do. Right. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. Well, if anyone ever hears of the ukulele killer, they'll know who to come yeah, to. Yeah. Don't wrong me. Yeah. Be sure to catch Lauren Elder's album release concert on January 25th, 2017 at The Slipper Room in New York City. Tickets available at theslipperroom.com. You can also follow Lauren at Lauren Elder Music on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube. Lauren's debut album will be available at laurenelder.music.com on January 25th, 2017, and on iTunes, Amazon, and Spotify shortly thereafter. If you are enjoying this episode of Dreaming With, you can help support the show by visiting stardreamscafe.com and clicking on the donate button to make a secure donation via PayPal. While there, you can watch more episodes of Dreaming With on the episodes page. For more of Adam's interviews, visit callmeadam.com. For more of Jefferson's dream interpretations, radio show appearances, and podcast episodes, visit everydaysymbology.com. Planning a visit to New York? First visit AlgonquinHotel.com. So we're back at the Algonquin Hotel here on StarDreamsCafe.com with Lauren Elder. We're dreaming with Lauren Elder. Tell me if you have any questions before we start. Well, um, no. Okay. I don't think so. So let's just go right into it then. You have a dream. Tell me. Um, I have, so I have like a recurring theme. Okay. At least once a year, I have a dream that involves the ocean. Okay. And I'll be at the beach and there will be giant sea creatures in the ocean. Like we'll be sitting on the, the sand and just looking at the ocean and it's almost cartoon like. The waves are, are like the, the, the waves like that, you know. And, and giant dolphins and whales and, and it's, all, it's all very happy and good, um, but it always looks that way. And then usually there's a, 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 like a giant wave that is going to come and we all get very, very scared, but then we always make it through. That's wonderful. <laughs> That's a wonderful dream. By the way, my recurring dream since I was a kid is ocean waves. Oh, wow. Yeah, like major, gigantic. Everyone is completely different. And I've had them since I was a child. So that's fascinating. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like almost a mutual. Almost I didn't have the giant sea creatures, though. The giant sea creatures are always there. And are they, they're uh, not frightening. Are it's, they coming that's just out of the water? Is. Like, how do you see? Yeah. A, are you just yeah, seeing like the top of the dolphin or the top? No, of the they're wing? like they're like just kind of they're like floating in the water. <laughs> like, Almost like bathtub toys. Yeah. Yeah. Kind so of. when was the first time you had this dream? Yes. At least ten years ago. Okay. Now that we've gone to ten years ago, would you say you had it before that? Maybe. What's the difference between your life ten years ago and your life today? Ten years ago, I was living in California. Mm -hmm. And I was working for Whole Foods. I was like a marketing person at my store. Fish in that department, like in the advertising or anything? Not that I remember, not that when, stands when out. When you dreamt of the beach, was it the beach in California? Yes, it's always uh, the same beach. That's, that's my question, is now that you're here in New York, do you still dream of the California beach? Yes, Okay. it's the same beach every time. Is it a particular beach that yes. you already know of in real life? Yes. Okay. And uh, what town? Laguna. Okay. So tell me the first time you were ever on that beach in Laguna. Um, I was probably two or three. Okay. And then I've spent almost every summer of my life on that beach. On that beach. Yeah. Including now. Like you'll, you'll, yeah, I you'll go. Yeah, I haven't been there this summer yet, but I'm going there in two weeks. Okay. Okay. So, so every year you visit that beach and every year you had this dream. but. Do you have the dream when you go to the beach, or do you have the dream at an entirely different time of the year? Usually at a different time. Do you but know when? It has happened when I'm there. Does it does it happen at the same time every year or different? I don't know. I think it's 
probably different, but I don't know. Okay. And sometimes it's more than once a year. Okay. You know, okay. but it happens at least When was the last time you had it? Uh, a few months ago, probably. What was going on a few months ago? Was that when you moved? Yep. Mm -hmm. Was it before you started the Kickstarter? Yes. Okay. So your life at that point was in transition. Mm -hmm. The reason that we have recurring dreams is because there's a message contained in the dream for us. And the reason it recurs is because we didn't get the message. So it's like the universe is tapping us on the shoulder and saying, um, Lauren, uh, here's the beach again. You know, This is coming up because something in this moment in your life is reflecting the moment in your life when you first had the dream. Or the subject of the dream, which you, as you say could go all the way back to when you're two or three. This could be something that goes all the way back to when you were an infant. Mm -hmm. And that in that time, this beach came to mean something so profound to you that it keeps coming up. I mean, the image of the extra large animals, first off, why are they extra large? From the view of a child, they'd be bigger, wouldn't they? Mm -hmm. The same way when you go back to the house that you grew up in and it looks so much smaller because when you were in it, like it's gigantic because you're yeah. tiny. The same thing, the, the, the animals in this are um, caricatures almost because mm -hmm. they're larger than life. But that's how the whole world looks to a small child. So my guess is that even though the dream may have only started 10 years ago or even 15, that this really goes all the way back to when you were two. So it's, it's a deeply rooted sensibility of your connection with the ocean and with these animals. Now you mentioned whales and dolphins, anything else? Sometimes like an octopus or a crab. Okay. You know? But all very happy. All very happy. All very happy, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, you know, frankly, when you say dolphin and whale, most people do have happy images of that, that sort mm -hmm. of thing. When you're seeing them, they're like friends. And I imagine if you think of the ocean as your bathtub, because you're two, and mom's throwing in all the toys, the mm -hmm. toys are like floating up on the surface, you can see them all. So whether it's a boat or, or say you have a dolphin toy, it's going to be floating up on top of the water. You can see it very clearly. I'm getting this sense that this dream is about your relationship with your mom and going all the way back then. And it has to do with your sense of security in the world. Mm -hmm. And that this dream comes in at moments of transition for you where you're feeling overwhelmed. And it comes in to calm you and to offer you a beach a respite, a vacation, um, a, a place to go where you feel comfortable and the place that you feel the most joy and the safest, which was probably that beach already. Mm -hmm. Not just because you visit it every year, which is wonderful because you get to see your mom, who I know you love, because I love her, she's a great person, um, and, and that you are connecting with her, with your childhood, with that beach, with its lifelong arc in your life, and with these animals who represent happiness to you. So using the most current one as the focal point, because we don't have the past ones in terms of detail, but just going by the most recent one, it happened at a point where you were moving from one apartment to the other. You didn't know for a long time where you were going to be moving to. Mm -hmm. There was a lot of stress around that. There was a lot of, um, you know, where do I go from here? Wasn't well, that what a child says? Are, isn't the child always looking for the parent to direct them? Mm -hmm. So when you get that sense inside of you, this dream comes up to reassure you. It's a wonderful thing. It's a gift. All right. Yeah. yeah that's I really like that. cool. I like that a lot, too. <laughs> well, this was so much fun. Yes, it was. Yeah, it was. great it was. time. We're yeah. so glad you were able to join us. Again. Oh, thank you. I loved it. Definitely. And I love that your CD is called Dreamy Afternoons, <laughs> and here you are on Star Dreams Cafe. It's yep. great. Dreams. Yeah. Everybody's gonna be dreaming of you once that album comes out. It's true. Oh, yeah. shit. It's true. It's true. Yeah. It is true. And being here at the Algonquin in the I, Oak I, Room, so cool. So I'm cool. So amazing. I mean, at this. what are you walking away from today? What What did you learn from today that you're gonna that through the dream interpretation that you're gonna take with you to? Well, I'm definitely going to be doing my my before bed work mm -hmm. to. Uh, to calm myself. Good. Um, and uh, yeah, remember that that ocean is is a good thing. Yeah. Coming to help me out. You know, uh, let me add to that too because you mentioned something in the in the recurring dream about the ocean, about the how big the waves were and how happy it felt and the enormity of the waves. Water tends to it doesn't always, but it tends to indicate emotion. Mm -hmm. So you here you have these big happy friendly animals and then the the big wave. The big wave really is the happiness. It's just your sense of like, this is the best place on earth to be. And it's just emphasis of that, that your emotion around this is happy. 
And uh, so that's what I would invite you to always bring into your dreams is that state because that's the goal, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Really, and, you know, we're happy, healthy, happy, healthy, dead. You know, so we're, <laughs> while we're here, you know, keep it as happy and healthy that's as possible. That's right. Yes. Yeah. So more big waves to you. Yes. All right. Yeah. Yes. And, and Thank here's you. to the Algonquin. Here's to the Algonquin. Yes. yes.